antigens and antibodies are used as a tool in diagnostic immunology. The basis of this is the antigen-antibody reactions, which are highly specific. If we have a known antibody, we can detect unknown antigens, and vice versa. In this video lecture we will study precipitation reactions. To understand what precipitation reaction is, we have to first understand the concept of immune complex formation. Let's say, a known amount of antigens is present in a solution. Now we add same amount of antibody molecules, which are specific to those antigens. What will happen next? Since, these antigens and antibodies are complementary to each other, once they come in close proximity they will form non-covalent bonds with each other. This results in small soluble antigen-antibody complexes. Now, we know that each antibody has two antigen binding sites, which means it is bivalent. Also we know that an antigen has many epidips and moreover, many of these epidips are identical. Thus, Antigens are multivalent. So now different antibody molecules will bind to the same antigen. And this will result in the cross-linking of antibodies. This repeated cross-linking results in the formation of an immune complex or lattice. More the antigen and antibody molecules become cross-linked, they form lattices large enough to precipitate out of solution and become visible. As the size of antigen antibody lattice increases, it loses its solubility and precipitates out of the solution and thus become visible. So, now we understand that in precipitation reactions, antibodies when mixed with soluble antigens in equal proportions results in lattice or immune complex formation which are insoluble. These insoluble complexes are called precipitates and they are visible. Let's have a look at the conditions necessary for precipitation reactions. Antibody must have at least two antigen binding sites. Antigen must be soluble. It must be either bivalent or multivalent. And at least two epidips present on antigen must be identical. The proportions of the antigens and antibodies must be equal, so that lattice can be formed. And all antigens and antibodies can take part in lattice formation. This reaction occurs in the presence of an electrolyte at a suitable temperature and pH. Precipitation can take place in liquid media or in gels. Let's now understand how the relative proportions of antigen and antibodies influence the formation of precipitate. Let's say, these are three test samples having soluble antigens in increasing amount. Suppose, first test sample has only two antigens, second has six, and third has 18 antigens. To each of these test samples, we now add same amount of antibody molecules. Let's say seven antibodies are added to each of these test samples. What will happen now? As you can see here, in case of first test sample antibodies are in excess. Antigen combines with only one or two antibody molecules, and no cross linkages are formed. Many free antibodies are there, but antigens are insufficient. Thus, no lattice formation takes place. In case of second test sample, antigen and antibody molecules are in optimal concentrations. The number of antigenic epidips and antibody combining sites is approximately equal. Each antigen is shared between two antibodies and cross-linking occurs. This results in the formation of insoluble lattice. This can be seen as invisible precipitate. There are no free antigen or antibody molecules. Let's now look at the third test sample. In this case, antigen is in excess, 
again no cross-linking occurs, this is because, now antibodies are insufficient. The antigen-antibody complexes formed are small and soluble. Therefore no precipitation occurs. So, if you have understood the relation of relative concentrations of antigen and antibody to the precipitate formation, we can now understand the precipitation curve. Precipitation curve is a graphical representation of precipitation reactions. In these reactions, concentration of one reactant is kept constant, and the concentration of second reactant is increased serially. Let's say, this is a series of test tubes having a constant amount of antibody. In the next step increasing amount of antigens is added to these test tubes. After some time precipitate forms. Centrifugation of each of these samples is done. Supernatant is poured off. And amount of precipitate is measured. The results can be shown by graphical presentation. The x-axis of this graph represents the increasing concentration of antigen. And the y-axis represents the amount of precipitate formed which contains antigen-antibody complexes. A precipitation curve is obtained. This curve shows how the amount of precipitation varies with varying concentration of antigen. Here you can see that as the amount of antigen added increases, the amount of precipitate also increases, but up to a certain peak. After that the amount of precipitate decreases with increasing amount of antigen. For further understanding, this graph can be divided into three zones. Zone of antibody excess, zone of equivalence, and zone of antigen excess. In the zone of antibody excess, no aggregation of antigen occurs, hence no lattice formation. In the zone of equivalence, the antigens and antibodies are in optimal concentration. So maximum amount of lattice formation takes place, and maximum precipitation occurs in this zone. In the zone of antigen excess, again no aggregation of antigens occurs. And hence no lattice formation takes place. So, in this video lecture we understood that in precipitation reactions, when antigens and antibody molecules are mixed in proper proportions, in the presence of electrolytes, at suitable temperature and pH, they form huge, insoluble, lattice-like complexes called precipitates. In coming video lectures we will study immunotechniques based on precipitation reactions. These techniques are precipitin ring test, immunodiffusion, and immune electrophoresis.